All right, so then let's talk about the female external genitalia. So what we have here, many parts, but I'll walk you through this. Okay, so here we have the pubic mons pubis, or sometimes called mound of Venus or pubic mound, but this is the anatomical term right here. Again, urethral, the, there are three separate orifices. You have the urethral opening, the vaginal entrance, and the anus. Now, what we have here are the labia minora and majora. And then over here we have the hymen, and it says in the, so in the slides and in the Martini book, it's a torn hymen. So this entrance is, yeah, so this hymen is a membrane that surrounds and closes, or surrounds the vaginal entrance. And yet another top hat question. Now this is an interesting one. Speaking of the hymen, so we have different hymens, they don't all have the same shape. So what we saw was a hymen with opening. So which hymen, these are types of hymen, needs to be corrected with surgery? So one of these hymen examples it actually is pathological. It needs to be corrected. Which one is the one that needs to be corrected with surgery? So there are different things going, or different shapes, different sizes, but one is pathological. All right, let's see what people said. So different so some most of you seem to click and prefer it some of you clicked here some click cribriform some click the septate hymen so the correct answer is the imperforate hymen so what we see here is that this hymen over here is completely intact there is no opening so what's a perforation well it's in general it refers to a small hole or opening so what we have here we have openings in all of these but when you have an imperforate one, that means there's no opening. So this is the one that needs surgery because what happens once a woman enters or female enters puberty and then starts having menstruation, well, what happens to the fluid? If there's no opening, how is that fluid going to drain? So even sometimes like OBGYNs can detect this at birth, but what they need to do is do a surgical opening, typically like an X pattern. They don't just like puncture it. But they have to prevent the accumulation of this blood and fluids in here and allow it to drain. So because again, the well, we'll get to that when we talk about the menstrual cycle. But yeah, that's what the whole reason why you need to actually create a surgical opening because otherwise the shed menses and also other fluids can build up in this imperforate hymen. Annular hymen, septate hymens, and cribriform, even though they're different shapes, they are normal. They, I mean, sometimes you have a little thin bit of membrane still here. Not all hymens are just perfectly circular. You can have multiple holes and parasintroitus. So that only happens after a certain condition. And what does it look like? Well, look, notice that that opening is really large, right? And it has a big diameter. So something big, maybe a six to 10 pound object had to come through that opening. So that that's what happened. You typically have this once you a woman gives birth, and this is what we typically see, a parasintroitus, because again, if or assuming that she didn't give birth via cesarean section, if she gave it vaginally, then, well, the baby has to, is going to pretty much just go through the hymen and take a lot of the membrane along with it. So even though it's very big, it's not pathological. All right, so then we talked about the hymen, and now let's talk about other things. And this is the vestibule. now. This is what I don't think it's very clear from the martini picture. And then what we have here, well, there you have the vestibule and the vestibular glands and the bulb of vestibule that's beneath the surface. So this is not actually, this is actually like a cut and peeling back the skin. So you have these glands underneath this, the right below the surface, but they do have small openings that cause secretions that help to lubricate and moisten this area. Now, what we have here is the clitoris, and here we have the glands of the clitoris. So just like the head, or what we call the glands of the penis, or sometimes just called the head of the penis, the clitoris also has a glands as well. And what we have here is what we call the prepuce, which is like, or sometimes layman's terms, we call it the clitoral hood. So just like for men who are uncircumcised, they have a foreskin, the prepuce is kind of like that. So the skin and membrane covering of the glands of the reproductive organ. And then we have the vestibule here. 
Now, I like this picture from the, I think this demonstrates the vestibule a little better. So what we have here are the labia minora being held by this woman over here. And the vestibule is this part right here. So it's within the labia minora, but you're not at the vagina yet. So you have the vaginal opening over here, but the area between the vaginal opening and the labia minora, this is what you call the vestibule. So this area over here. And this is also something else, like a lot of people know that the clitoris is external, but what we have here, see here, is that, hey, you have the glans clitoris, and this part is still part of the clitoris, but it's just within the body. So the clitoris actually has an internal and an external part. So the actually, the, all the external genitalia collectively are called the vulva. So common misconception, sometimes people use the term vulva interchangeably with vagina, Vagina refers to specifically this between this part with the vaginal opening and the cervix. That's not the vulva. The vulva includes the vagina and all these external surfaces. So that's the, what a vulva is. But what do you know so about back to the clitoris? What you see here is the something called the ca corpus cavernosum. Hey, where did we hear that before? We heard that the, the or let's ask the chat. Does the, does the male reproductive system have a corpus cavernosum or cavernosa? Yes, so there is a male corpora cavernosa in the penis. So that is correct. So yes, the thing about the clitoris is like, it's, it's, it's comes from the same homologous or develops from the same homologous structure as the penis. So the, both the penis and the clitoris, they're erectile tissue. So they have the corpus cavernosum and they both fill with blood. So this is why the clitoris is not just this part right here that we can that's visible from the outside. You also have it underneath the skin and within the abdominal cavity. So the clitoris is both external and internal. It's just not it's neither it's completely external or completely internal.